Hi. Everyone, hi. Give me a sec, I'm trying to see how to share screen. Hi, Ari, Arian, F, F H Chu, Adrian. Hi, Francis. Hi, Frank. Okay. Can I just check if everyone can see my screen? It should say. Um, Ultimate Forex Trading Masterclass Tech Mail 2022. Okay, it's supposed to say 2023, but my other, hi, hi, Richard, but my other uh, slides, my other slides, um, it says corrupted, so I have no choice. I have to use this slides for the introduction. Anyway, it's just an introduction. More importantly is when we go to trading view, so... I was just going to use this older slides to do the introduction. Hi. Hi, Yunus. Hi, Summit. Hey, Summit again. <laughs> okay, cool. Everyone can see my screen, right? That's the most important part. Okay, so uh, the thing that is important I wanted to share with the introduction is the disclaimer. So disclaimer, disclaimer, you guys know how this works. Any information I share in this webinar should not be construed as trading advice, okay? You should only take this as educational. You shouldn't take this as financial advice or investment advice or any kind of trading advice. Just uh, only educational. Okay, cool. Everyone okay with that? Other than that, I'm just going to introduce myself and then we can go straight um, into the live webinar because I the this slides are not the correct slides. Uh, so it says advanced Ichimoku Kinko Hyo strategy. This is an old slide. Again, I was saying, okay, uh, by right today is a live trading analysis session. Okay, today is a live trading analysis session. My slides were corrupted. The actual slides were corrupted, so I have no choice but to use an old slide to do the introduction. Okay, so for those who don't already know me, my name is Cassandra. You can call me Cass. I am an investment analyst and a prop trader at Everest Fortune Group. We're an award-winning research firm. We are the finalists for Best Forex and Best Equity Research for 2019, 2020, and 2021. 2022 is not out yet. That's why you don't see it here. Basically, what we do is do a lot of research. We do a lot of um, back testings to kind of forecast where we think the markets are going. And then we advise banks, brokerages, hedge funds, financial institutions, and we share them in these webinars. Okay. Oh, hey, Chamilu. Hi. Nice seeing you here. Okay, so in terms of my own trading, I am a prop trader. I not only trade for Everest, I trade for a few other prop firms as well. For those who don't know about these prop firms, these prop firms require a trader to be profitable within eight to 10, with eight to 10% profit within the month to even get into their firm or even get funded. So I am uh, a funded trader, I've done eight to 10% multiple times already. Um, so how I did it is using technical analysis. And so if you guys have any questions regarding technical analysis, do not be shy. Please ask me about uh, technical analysis. I will try my best to help you. Okay, guys, just give me a sec. I think like the lighting is really dark. It's hurting my eyes. Just give me a sec. Let me just turn on more lights. Okay, um, that's so much better for me.
Hi, Mar Malesela or Samuel. There's no slides today. I'm only using this as an introduction. After this, we're going straight to uh, live trading. Okay. Um, hi, Richard. Yes, I do use a lot of Ichimoku. Hi, Pravin. Okay, I do use a lot of Ichimoku. That's what we did. We did. Uh, this webinar, I think a while ago, probably months ago. That's why I'm just using this old slides. For those who are asking for today's slides, there are no slides today because today's session is a live analysis session. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing. We're going to go straight into uh, trading view. Give me a sec. Okay, cool. Can I check if everyone can see my screen? It should say, it should be on trading view, view XAUUSD. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, okay, Jamilu is requesting for XAUUSD and USDJPY. Good request. We can look at both of that. Can uh, you guys let me know if can, you guys can see my screen? It should say Trading View. I'm on Trading View. So, yeah, let me know. Um, there's no response. So, I don't know if like you guys can see my screen or if like the video is stuck. <laughs> okay, thank you, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, I just need uh, like someone to respond so that I know like we're not stuck. I, there was a time I was talking to myself for 15 minutes, a good 15 minutes before uh, people started calling me to tell me that my webinar was stuck. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Samit. Thank you, Eunice. Thank you, uh, Salgado. Sorry, I can't pronounce your first name. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, cool. So, um, I think Summit, you've already joined my um, webinar earlier on. Right, my other webinar. Okay, so one thing I noticed with, I'm gonna quickly share with you guys. One thing I noticed, I do see a lot of regulars here for Everest Fortune Group. So um, probably Richard, um, let me see. Summit, Jamilu. Okay, you guys would know this strategy. So the thing that I wanted to point out first before I do my usual trading style is to point out that there is a Nike tick strategy here. So a Nike tick strategy is basically a strategy that we notice here at Everest Fortune Group. So remember at Everest Fortune Group, we do a lot of back testing and a lot of like back testing of research. So what we notice from all our back testing and research that every time, not every time, I would say a good eight to 10 times, Price does this Nike take, you know, Nike, the brand, the shoe brand. Okay, like Nike. Okay, every time we see this Nike take, it tends to kind of do a pullback, 23.6% uh, pullback, and that's where we enter for a sell. So we notice that every time we see like this tick, it follows by a little pullback, and then after the pullback, it's probably going to continue up or go down, whatever it is, whatever price wants to do. The point is we get in here for the sell up to the pullback. Okay, so that's one thing that I noticed with gold. Okay, so how this strategy works is that you take the swing high and the swing low of that Nike take, so you get the Fibonacci extension, okay, and then you pull out your 127.2 by right on the 127.2 mark, which is here, price will do a reversal, okay? So this is where we would have entered for our sell. Uh, it looks like the sell already happened. It looks like price already went there, okay? And now it's pulling back, okay? So where do we sell it to? The sell will stop at, I minimally it will go to 23.6%. Okay, minimally it will go to 23.6%. Okay, this is based on this strategy. Okay, so based on the Nike Tick strategy, we notice, uh, why is there, why is this so long? 
Just give me a sec, guys. Why is it so long? Oh, okay. I'm going to get rid of this so it's not so messy. Every time when I look at my charts and it looks, uh, Nike Tick Strategy stop one tick behind the high. Uh, right. Yep, the aim is to get at 23.6. Okay, so the thing that we noticed, okay, got rid of the wrong one. So it will do 127.2 and then from this area kind of pull back 23.6. Okay, so that means ideally based on this strategy, it will pull back to kind of this area and then you kind of take profit here. And then from here, it does whatever it wants to do. Okay, Either it can go up, it can go down, it's up to price. Because the point is that we're getting in here from, from here to the sell. So it doesn't really matter what happens afterwards because it already hit our take profit. Okay, so the thing is, uh, I was hoping that the, the 23.6 landed here actually because then it will be a confluence with the horizontal pullback support here but in this case it's here i do see confluence here as well it would be here the confluence will be in this area okay kind of like somewhere in this area because it kind of coincides with this swing low okay not the best support area but i mean uh i will acknowledge that there is a support area there okay what i ideally wanted to see was the swing low being the 23.6 landing here okay but in this case it didn't land here let me see uh where the swing low was supposed to end. okay if it came here the 23.6 was there um okay i know why it's not landing there already okay um i know why it's not landing at 23.6 okay because the swing low i'm supposed to take is from here and the swing high I'm supposed to take is from here. And then we pull out the 23.6 level. Okay, so yeah. So it does line up at this swing high here. Okay, so, so the idea is that you get in here. Uh, it'll be clear if we move down to the four hours. Okay, the, or even the one hour actually. Okay, uh, yes. So the idea is you get in here at the cell entry. You sell it to the 23.6. And then after that, whatever happens, happens. Your stop loss, you just put it. Your stop loss, you put it at the. I will need to go back to the bigger time frame to show you guys. Okay. This stop loss, we'll put it at the 138.2. Okay, so I 138.6. So your our stop loss, our entry would have been the 127.2. Our stop loss will be the 138.6. And our take profit will be the 23.6. So okay, this is just one strategy. What is the success rate that you have experienced with the Nike take strategy? Okay, so like I said, uh, this Nike take strategy based on our own back testing, we have found that it works about eight out of 10 times. So it works very, it works more times that it doesn't work. So therefore, uh, when I see this, we will try, we do try to take it. Okay, we do try to take this trade. Uh, but there are times again, of course, no strategy is 100% doesn't work all the time. But we just noticed that a lot of times it works. So a lot of times we will take this kind of trade. Okay. Especially if there are other things that are lining up. So the other things that are lining up, I wanted to see like the 127.2 area. I would want to see more Fibonacci confluence. That means I want to see more Fibonacci levels lining up there, more reasons for us to believe that price is going to reverse there. But in this case, uh, I already tested it just now. Okay. We already tested this uh, earlier in the day. And <clears throat> the only level that lines up here is 127.2 and this swing high here. So is that a good enough reason to believe price is going to reverse from here? I think it's an okay reason. It's not the best reason to believe that price is going to reverse from here, but it is like, like if I have to talk about probability wise or like 
how biased I am. I think I'm like 65% biased that price is going to reverse from here to here. Okay, I'm like six, okay, 70%, sorry. Maybe about 70%, uh, I have 70% confidence that price is gonna do this like pullback from here to here and then you take your profit because then this would have been a really, it's a really good scalping trade, I think. Okay, this is a really short trade. This trade will probably play out in a few hours. Okay, let's say you get in at the best entry possible. You put your stop loss here. Sorry, the best entry will be somewhere between the sell entry and anywhere higher. Okay, so it will be around 1.8, a really good entry. But in this case, price is already on the way down. Let's say price were to pull back up one more time. That's your second opportunity to get in. If not, then just skip this trade. Okay, just skip this trade. This is just one of the many trades that are available on the markets and the many trades that are available on the charts. Okay, so you don't have to force a trade. This is just one trade that we that I saw. Okay, and the probability I think is maybe like 70%. Okay, I'm only 70% confident with this. Um, hi, Leanne. Are you mentioning numbers in your stop loss, take profit, etc., which are different from the charts? Um, I haven't mentioned any numbers. I'm only highlighting uh, zones that could be your stop loss, take profit, and entry. I haven't like actually mentioned any numbers yet. The numbers you want to look at, uh, these are your zones. So basically, um, for those who just joined or a bit lost, why am, why am I even drawing this cell entry here? It's because, okay, it's because, uh, like I was saying here at Everest Fortune Group, we focus a lot on like, like uh, research and backtesting. And from our backtesting, we noticed this strategy called the Nike Tick strategy. We, it's probably named something else, okay? Okay, but we named it the Nike Tick strategy. If you Google Nike Tick strategy, probably will come out at Everest Fortune Group's website or whatever. Okay, so this Nike tick strategy, we notice that every time price does this like tick kind of pattern, it tends to pull back to the 23.6% Fibonacci retracement. So the thing that I'm calling is the possibility that price will reverse from this area, which is this sell entry here and this swing high here, the 127.2 Fibonacci extension to this 23.6 Fibonacci retracement area. Okay, so that's one probability, one possible trade setup. Okay, that is one possible trade setup. Whether you guys want to get in on that trade is entirely up to you. Okay, it is entirely up to you, but this is one setup that we do use sometimes. Okay, this is one setup that we do use sometimes, and this is a setup that you can consider. Uh, don't get into this trade unless you are confident with this strategy. Like I was saying, I do see regulars here like Jamilu, Richard. Uh, no, there's a few Richards here today, okay? Uh, I know. Let me see. I know Richard Yo is a regular, okay? Uh, Jamilu and Summit, okay? You guys are regular, so you know about this strategy. But for those who are hearing this strategy for the first time, don't get into this trade just because I told you about the strategy. Go and do your own back testing and see if it really works, okay? Just see if it really works. So again, what we notice is every time there's like a, like, like a tick pattern, we notice that it will pull back 23.6%. Every time there's a tick pattern, see, there's a tick pattern. That's an inverse tick, okay? It will pull back 23.6%, okay? so. Uh, right now, it's doing a tick pattern again. Our bias is that it will do kind of like this reversal. It might or might not happen, but again, based on back testing and... Yeah, I know it very well. <laughs> and apply the... Yeah, that's right. How do you know that the uptick hasn't stopped to take the trick? Uh, that's why we use the 127.2. Again, 
back based on our back testing, we noticed that 127.2 is the level that price tends to go to and then reverse. It can be higher, it can be higher, it can be lower, but a lot of times 127.2 is the level that it reverses. Okay, everyone clear for now? Okay, again, uh, let me repeat one more time because I have people asking the same questions, like the same questions. So the, que so the thing is with this Nike tick strategy, every time price does a tick pattern, it tends to go 127.2 and then from 127.2, it pulls back to 23.6%. If it reaches TP and go back entry level, can one re-enter and then sell again? Okay, usually if it already reached the take profit, we don't enter a second time. We notice this happens. What we notice, okay, is that it, it does it one time. And then from here, either it will do a breakout or it will continue up. Um, a lot of times it continues up. When we did our back testing, we noticed that once it reaches 23.6, it will continue with the trend that it, it was doing. Okay, so usually uh, if it goes back to your entry a second time, do not get in the second time. It only works the first time. Okay, so this is just one strategy I'm showing you guys. Okay, so now that we are, if everyone is clear with the Nike tick strategy, I'm going to show you guys the strategy that I usually use. I'm going to duplicate this screen. I'm going to leave this here, okay? So one, setup that I have for you guys today is a possible sell from 127.2 Fibonacci extension to 23.6 Fibonacci retracement. Okay, these are not numbers. Oh, okay, I think I know why some of you are confused thinking that I said some numbers. The numbers I'm saying are Fibonacci levels, not numbers on the screen. The numbers on the screen are here on the right side. Okay, so anyways, I'm going to show you guys on a normal day how I usually chart XAU USD. If I didn't see that Nike tick pattern, okay, if I didn't see that tick pattern, I would have totally just used my own trading style. Okay, so my own trading style is uh, not like that, okay? Okay, so I'll show you my own trading style. Okay, my own trading style, I'm going to get rid of this. My own trading style, for those who join my webinar very frequently, you will know my trading style requires the trader to look for trend. Okay, so trend is very important in my trading style. So I need to know if price is going on an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay, so I just want to know if you guys are still following me. Uh, can you guys let me know in the chat box if you think price is going up or down? Do you think price is on an uptrend or do you think price is on a downtrend? just from looking at the charts. Okay, we've got answers coming in. Uh, thank you, Jamilu. Thank you, Muhammad. Thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Ojo, or Ma, Ma, ba, me, ba, me Delhi. Okay, thank you, Pengen. Okay, so I think a majority of you, I do have different answers, but majority of you answered. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Sibo, and thank you, Bright. I know why my the room seems really dark. It's my glasses. It's not the lighting of the room. Okay, so hopefully this gets better. Okay, this is so much better. Okay, so. Okay, thank you, Lesolomane. Thank you, host. Um, okay, so there are different answers. I do see some of you saying down. I do see some of you saying consolidating. Majority of you said up. Okay, um, let's see what, what I think it is. Okay, so usually when I'm looking for trend, it's very easy for me to look for trend because the first thing I do is I either look for channel or a trend line. So if I look for channel or trend line, then I can easily answer my question, is price going up or down? Okay, so in this case, 
this I do see a trend line, but this is not a valid trend line because a valid trend line would need three touches. So in this case, there's only two touches here. So this is not a valid trend line. Okay, so I won't using this trend line, I cannot say that um, price is respecting the trend line. If I use a channel, okay, if I use a channel, price looks like it's going nicely up this channel, but I wouldn't say it's this is a valid channel. Okay, so our rule for channels is that it needs to have two touches at the bottom and two touches at the top. But right now it only has it only has one touch at the top and two at the bottom. So this is not a valid channel. Okay, that being said, it doesn't matter. I can still identify trend without the channel and the trend line. How do I identify trend? The rule, the most basic rule of identifying trend is higher, high, higher, low, or lower, low, lower, high. Okay, so in this case, the highs are getting higher. Okay, we can see higher highs, higher lows. Okay, so based on this very simple rule, I can establish that price is going up. Okay, it's going up kind of like in this pattern. Uh, we couldn't draw it in a parallel channel, but yes, it is going up in my opinion. Okay, so now that it is going up, now that I know that it's going up, I feel like we have won half our battle. Okay, why? Because if I know trend is going up, I should be entering for a buy or a sell. If you guys know that trend is up, do you guys enter for a buy or sell? Just quickly let me know in the chat box while I highlight some support resistance area. Okay, I think everyone is in agreement. Answer, answer, up, I will go, I will end. I'll enter for buy, 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 buy. Uh, uptrend. We do have a few people saying sell. Majority of you are saying buy. Okay, why? Because although price is always going in a zigzag motion, okay, price is moving, price is constantly retracing. Ideally, you want to get in here for the buy. You want to get in here for the buy. You want to get in here for the buy. Okay, you can get in here for the sell if you want to. Yes, I'm not saying that if price is going up, you can you cannot go in for a sell. You can, but it is going against trend. We try to follow trend because it is safer. Okay, it is safer to follow trend. Also, because if the trend is going up and you enter for a buy, the momentum can push you to your take profit easier than your stop loss. Okay, it is a buy when it's low and highs yeah that's right okay so if you are entering a buy and the momentum is up it's easier for momentum and the trend to push you up so if we follow the trend we buy but if we're following the negative strategy we sell yeah that is uh exactly right Leah so the negative strategy although um very good uh very good observation okay so uh Leah was saying that uh, if the trend is up, we should be going for a buy, but the Nike Tick strategy is telling us to sell. Okay, so the Nike Tick strategy, I personally, I don't use the Nike Tick strategy. I mean, if I see it, then I will consider using it, okay? But I don't like to use it because it is going against trend. You are calling, the Nike Tick strategy always calls for the pullback. So the Nike Tick strategy always plays the pullback, the little bit of pullback. Price can be doing this, okay? Price can be doing this. Oops. Price is going up. It does a pullback. It goes up. It does a pullback. And then it continues going up, okay? On the long run, price can be going up. But the Nike tick strategy asked. <laughs> okay, that's a good idea. Okay, the Nike tick strategy is a strategy that requires the buyer to go against trend. So although I do acknowledge that the Nike Tick strategy is quite uh, effective, like I said, out of 10 times that we spot the Nike Tick, the Nike, the Nike Tick, out of eight times, it will play out very nicely. Okay, so it's an eight out of 10 times strategy, it works, but I don't like playing it because it's going against trend. I much prefer waiting for price to get here, and then from here, I enter for buy. 
Okay, I much prefer. Okay, that's my own preference though. Like I said, that's why there's no, I'm not telling you that you cannot sell in an uptrend market. I'm just saying that I think it's dangerous. I think it's more risky. I think it's more risky to go against trend. I'd rather go with the waves. You know what I mean? And let then let the waves push me to my take profit. Okay, so, uh, but that's my own uh, personal opinion. Again, guys, remember, every time I take you guys for this webinar, that is why the disclaimer is so important. It is to remind you guys that whatever I share with you guys in this webinar is based on my own trading experience and a lot of it is based on my own trading style as well. Okay, so if you are someone who likes to trade against the trend and it works for you, definitely go for it. But my style of trading is I like to follow the trend. Okay, so uh, I think everyone is in agreement. Wait for pullback first before I buy. Okay, so Cristanto is definitely on the same page as me. Cristanto said that if that's a daily uh, take time frame, so I'll probably wait for the pullback first before I buy. So my style is to wait for the pullback and then enter for the buy. That is my style. But there are traders who wants to enter right now for the sell, sell it to the end area of the buy and then at the buy area, enter again for the buy. So I don't know if you want to chase every trade. It's kind of dangerous. I feel like it's not necessary to, to chase every trade. Like every time there's a sell, you enter. Every time there's a buy, you enter. Then you buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. You can, if you want to, uh, like my own my own risk appetite is not like that, okay? So 95% of you answered buy. So we will be looking for a buy entry with this setup, okay? So I'm going down to the smaller time frame to see what information I can get. I'm going to move this up because it's more accurate. It's closer to price anyways, okay? So what I would do, just like a very quick bias, right? Just a very quick analyst, analysis, I would immediately... Wait for a pullback here. Okay, wait for price to pull back to this area. In this area, I get in for a buy. Okay. Only if price pulls back to my area do I get in for a buy. I don't just get in for a buy now. Okay, because you do not want to get in for a buy at a bad entry. Okay, you want to get in at the best possible entry. So my best possible option, I think, for the buy would be the pullback to this area here. Uh, how do I know that can be a good pullback? Now I pull up my other things. I pull up my Fibonacci. I pull up all my other things to see if anything lines up there. Yeah, that's where the 23.6 is, which coincides with the Nike tick strategy. Okay, so this is the area. I'm going to highlight this area. Uh, remember, support resistance is never one simple number. It's always a zone. Okay, so this is the zone of where I think price is going to reverse off. Okay, that's one thing that I can see. Other than that, I don't really see any opportunity to draw any Fibonacci levels. It's okay. Now I'm going to pull out the indicators to see if the indicators agree with me that it is a buy. If the indicators, if I pull out the indicators and indicators tell me it's not a buy, it's a sell, I will immediately stay out of the market. Okay, I will immediately stay out of the market because I want the indicators to agree with my analysis. If they don't agree, then why am I risking going against the indicator? Okay, I'll just skip the trade and... If I lose this, uh, if this trade goes to take profit, then I just miss the trade. If it goes to the stop loss, then I just save myself some money. Okay, so based on Ichimoku, price is still on an uptrend. It is agreeing with our analysis. So let's remember, okay, we pull out Ichimoku. Ichimoku agrees with our analysis of the buy. Okay, now let's pull out other indicators. Uh, another one I want to use is DMI. DMI is Directional Movement Index. Another one I want to use is stochastics. Oh no. This not the stochastics I want. Okay, there, stochastics. Another indicator I want to use is, okay, I because my account is the free account, I don't think I get to use so many indicators. 
Okay, we just need to remember Ichimoku is agreeing with our analysis. I'm going to delete Ichimoku so I can pull up more. I think I can only use three free indicators. Three free indicators at a time. Okay, RSI. Okay, I want to see what these three indicators are telling me. Okay, if I'm looking at a DMI, DMI is an uptrend. DNA is an uptrend and trend is strong, okay? So Ichimoku agrees with us, DMI agrees with us. Uh, the overall uptrend of higher high, higher lows agree with us. So we have three reasons. Is Ichimoku set up by default? Yep, Ichimoku, I just use the default settings. I do not change the settings for Ichimoku, okay? So everything about trading is logical, okay? There's nothing about trading that is emotional. There's nothing about trading that is like feeling like, oh, I feel I woke up today. I had a dream that goal is going up. No, there's nothing about trading that is like by feeling or like that. Okay. So everything about trading has to be logical. So I tell you guys that it's a buy. I now need to give you reason why I think it's a buy. So the, the indicators and the charts need to tell me that it's a buy so that I can tell you it's a buy. Okay. I need to have reason. So everything about trading is very logical. Is very, very logical. Rest of the indicators by default too. Okay, uh, RSI, I use default, so 14. Stochastics, I use 21, 5, and 3. Because based on our back testing, we noticed that 21, 5, and 3 works quite well. Okay, so 21, 5, and 3. By default, I just usually just change it to 21, 5, and 3. RSI, I just leave it. Uh, DMI, I pulled out the DMI, it is by default. So other than stochastics, the rest is default. Okay, so DMI agrees that it's a buy. Ichimoku agrees that it's a buy. The next one is stochastics. Does stochastics agree it's a buy? Okay, if anything, stochastics is saying it's a sell, which is perfect for our analysis. Remember our analysis is price needs to pull down first only after it has pulled down here you enter for a buy so if we're looking at stochastics right now stochastic is kind of saying okay we're at the overbought area it's time to pull down which is perfect if it pulls down then it will pull down to our entry we need price to go to our entry then we can get in okay uh guys give me one minute i'll be back Okay, uh, sorry, I had a alarm turned on. I don't know why. It's probably by accident. The alarm was ringing in the background. Okay, so, uh, which is perfect. So stochastic, it's not, it's not really agreeing with our analysis, but then again, it's not going against our analysis. It's kind of bearish divergence. Let me see. I'm trying to see the bearish divergence. Hmm. Okay, so our stochastics is okay. We're gonna get rid of stochastics. Okay, uh, Jamila saying RSI has a bearish divergence. Let me see if I see the bearish divergence. I guess I kind of see it. Okay, I do kind of see like a slight I do see a slight divergence here. Okay, that's one. First, this first there's this one here. Okay, but that one's over already. Okay, a second one is here. Making higher highs, making okay. I do see the bearish divergence. Uh thanks, Jamilu. Uh okay, so. I do not like divergences. <laughs> uh, I really don't like divergences. I think I didn't, I don't know if it was last week I took you guys or the week before. Ethereum, everything was showing a sell. 
everything, all indicators showing a cell. Ichimoku, stochastics, trend line, blah, blah, blah. Everything is showing a cell. And then RSI was showing a bullish divergence. Guess what? RSI was correct. So 100 indicators. Okay. So uh, good catch, Jermilo. Okay, guys. Right now, a lot of signs are pointing to buy, okay? But there's a bearish divergence of RSI. So the thing about bearish divergence is that price on the charts is going up, but on the RSI, it's going down, okay? So the RSI, which is an oscillator, is showing otherwise, okay? So it is the, right now, so far, we pulled out four indicators, right? It is the only indicator that is showing us otherwise. Okay, so if you do want to enter this buy, my advice to you is, okay, that you have two options. Okay, number one, don't enter at all. Totally skip it. Okay, why? Like sometimes when I see divergence, I immediately skip the trade. Why? Because I have been burned many times before, just like Richard. I have been burned many times before by divergences. Everything is telling me it's a buy. The news, even fundamental analysis telling me it's a buy. Everything, all technical analysis telling me it's a buy. Suddenly, there is one bearish divergence and then the bearish divergence is correct. Like, mm. <laughs> So if you want to enter this, you have two options. Number one, don't even enter at all. Number two, if you are going to enter this, go in with a small lot. So if you usually risk 1% for this, maybe today, maybe if you want to enter this buy, you can risk 0.5%. I can't see why gold go, would go down today as the US is weak. Yeah, exactly. So even fundamentals is saying that there's no reason for gold to go down, but uh, we're not going to ignore that there is a bearish divergence here. So... Whether you want to take this bearish divergence into consideration is entirely up to you. I won't say it's the strongest divergence. A stronger divergence, I would like it to start from here. So that means from here, there was already a swing high and then it's making lower lows, okay? But I will acknowledge that there is a little bit of divergence here. So whether you want to take this into consideration is up to you. Because of this divergence, let's say just now I was... Uh, let's say before I saw the divergence, I was like 85% confident of this buy trade. Now that I see the, the divergence, I immediately am like 70% confident only. Okay, so my confidence level for this trade immediately decreases because of this divergence. So whether you still want to take this trade is entirely up to you. I would still probably take this trade, but at a very, very small lot size. I will take it at a very, very small lot size. Usually I risk 1%, maybe today I will, if it reaches our entry, I will probably risk like, um, I don't know, 0.3% maybe. Okay, I will still get in and I'll risk less. Okay, so this will be our possible buy entry. Take note of the divergence, okay? The divergence may be a warning not to get in, okay? Um, See, it's very hard because you have one thing telling you not to get in, but you have so many other things to tell you to get in for the buy. So who do you listen to? Do you listen to 10 people or do you listen to one person? Okay, but that one person, every time that one person speaks, it's very accurate. So who do you listen to? That's entirely up to you guys. Uh, what you can do is put a very tight stop loss so that if you are getting in, how many indicators do you look at before jumping, jumping in? Okay, I usually look at Ichimoku, Stochastics, RSI, and DMI. So I look at four. Okay, these are the four. Stochastic and RSI, my only reason to look at Stochastic and RSI is to look for divergence. Okay? It's opportunity to use the Nike tape. Yeah, it is the opportunity. So maybe if you want to get into this cell, you can, but... Honestly, it, it's not at the entry. The entry is 2,000. Right now, it's at 1,986. So it's a bit far from entry already. I don't recommend you getting in when trade is already on the way to take profit, okay? The only reason I use RSI and stochastics is because I'm looking for divergence. If I don't see a divergence, I immediately take it as a green tick. When I see a divergence, then I need to think 100 times whether I want to get into this trade, okay? So, uh. So that's how it is, okay? 
stop. Oh, sorry, Richard, I don't really understand your question. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one. I think Jeremy Lu is requested for another trade. Yeah, Jeremy Lu is requesting for USDJPY. Let's see what USDJPY has for us. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the thing. So depending on how you're using the stochastics, it could have been read a different way, but I will not, like, I will acknowledge that there was a slight diversion still. So yeah, there is different, different ways to look, look use the stochastic. One single indicator, you, there's so many different ways to use it. So uh, Richard is right. Uh, stochastics can be set on exponential as well. Okay, so there's different ways to use it, but I uh, just saying that diversion makes me oh, just makes my makes my confidence level not that great. Okay, so you guys you guys decide whether you want to go in. Uh, my our my job for today is just to analyze the charts together with you guys. Hopefully, we find something else. Okay, so let's start with USD JPY. Okay, USD JPY, I do see price going on a downtrend. Kind of back with this. This looks like it's more like a retracement and a continuation downtrend. Okay, so there's two ways to read this. Number one. So you're using a nipple average with the Okay, so the stochastic set you that I use is just this. We're talking about stocks, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, this is I we find that is good enough to give us like enough information. Right? Th this is like what we find to give us enough information. Okay, give me a sec, guys. I just got a notification saying that the internet connection is low. Can you guys let me know if you can still hear me uh, loud and clear? Can you guys let me know if you can still hear me loud and clear? Okay, everyone can still, uh, okay, I'm just gonna ignore this notification then. I saw a notification that says, that says that, um, Okay, um, before I continue, I did see someone say something. Is that not a bearish crowd? Okay, Sebo, Sebo. Okay, let me see if that's a bearish crowd. So a bearish crowd is just a chart pattern, right? It's just a chart pattern. Okay, a uh, bearish crown kind of looks something like, it kind of looks something like, Okay, let me try to draw the best. I don't really use bearish crowns that often, but I, I know it looks kind of like a head and shoulder. Kind of looks like a head and shoulder. Okay, so give me a sec to identify the bearish crown. Okay. Even if this this other pattern here, uh, thanks, thanks Sibo Sibo for the for noting up. The stream got cut for a while, a few seconds a while ago. Okay, um, is the streaming okay now? Is the streaming okay for everyone now? Uh, yeah, it was a bit laggy a while ago. Okay, now it's okay. Can you check and give me this forming your head and shoulder in the weekly time frame? Okay, everyone is good, right? Everyone is good. Okay, 
So the bearish uh, crown that uh, Seabus was making, it kind of looks like a head and shoulder pattern. So usually after a bearish crown pattern, something like this, okay, it will usually continue with a downtrend. That's why when I was looking at the chart just now, I was asking, there's like two scenarios, okay? So the first scenario is that it's pulling back. It's just doing a retracement and then it's going to continue down with the downtrend. The other scenario is that uh, this is already an uptrend. Okay, that's the other scenario. So I guess for the bearish crown to work the same with the head and shoulder, you need to break the neckline or you need to break some kind of area to validate that the bearish crown works. So I guess in this case, it will be around this area. The bearish crown needs to pull back to this area. Here will be the deciding factor whether it's going to go up or go down. Okay, so that's uh, one. That being said, uh, I think trend is not very clear for USD JPY. Doesn't matter. Right now, we're just going to highlight support and resistance. And from that, we're going to decide. And USD JPY is that forming a head and shoulder. Okay, so another uh, Crisanto is spotted a head and shoulder. Hmm. Okay, a lot of bearish. Okay, thank you, Sub, uh, Crisanto. Thank you. Sebo, Sebo. Okay, so there's two chart patterns now kind of showing. Okay, uh, the most recent shift appears to make it a short trend. Okay, there's two patterns now that is pointing downwards. Let's see what we can establish from this. Okay, one thing, first things first, before we even chart USDJPY, let's see if there's news tonight on USDJPY. So if you guys didn't know at the bottom of the chart, do you see these circles here? If you guys didn't know, this is where you can look for news. So. Fed press conference, FOMC, Fed, uh, all this is on the 23rd. Today's the 22nd. Uh, sorry, today's the 20th. This is not relevant to our analysis today. Today, headlines for USD JPY. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so why am I looking at that? Um, my style of trading is totally technical analysis. I do not trade fundamental analysis. Therefore, if I know that there is major news coming on that day, I don't trade at all. Okay. I don't trade because your technical analysis can show you, tell you that it's going up or it tells you it's going down. Tonight, the Fed meeting, FOMC data or whatever data comes out and it's, it's performing better than expected. When that happens, all your analysis is out the door. Okay, that's why when there's news, I don't trade it. Uh, I was saying in the beginning of the webinar, if you have fundamental analysis, questions to ask, don't ask me. I don't specialize in fundamental analysis. I specialize in technical analysis. Okay, so that's that. We're going to look for support resistance. I'm a little bit more biased on bearish because of you guys showing me all the chart patterns, but let's see what the chart says, okay? Let's see if the chart tells us otherwise. Okay, so the first thing first I see on the chart is that price was moving on the uptrend, Okay, it was kind of moving in a uptrend, but that uptrend has ended already because price broke, meaning that the bearish momentum is strong. So at this current point of time on the daily, I am more biased towards sell than buy, okay? I am more biased towards sell than I am to buy because of the two chart patterns and because of this break of this trend line. Again, whenever you decide something in trading, it needs to come with, reason so my reason for believing that it's a sell is because i think that trend that the bullish uptrend here is so weak it's so weak it only pulled back a little bit this down it pulled back a little bit and then now it's it looks like it's continuing with the downtrend therefore i want to look for a sell entry okay i am more biased to look for a sell entry it could be a very yeah, it depends on the dollar chart as well, of course. Okay, it, it could be a very short sell entry, okay? But um, I'm just more biased on it being a sell. Again, trading or lower lows and lower highs. Yep, 
lower lows and lower highs, especially on this global time frame as well. You can see that kind chart is kind of forming this like a uh, sh short structure, anyways. This downtrend structure, anyways. Okay, so I am a bit more biased that it is a sell rather than anything. Okay, so I'm gonna look for analysis. We only have five more minutes. I'm gonna look for analysis on USD, uh, USD JPY. Okay, I'm more biased on the sell. Therefore, I'm looking to play a breakout here. Okay, let me see if I want to try something else. Okay. I don't think that's very strong support level. Maybe this would be a bit better. Okay, I think the structure of the charts isn't beautiful. I cannot use Fibonacci in this level because Fibonacci requires you to take the swing high and the swing low to get your levels, okay? In this case, the swing low is not completed yet. Can you see price is still moving downwards or I don't know if it's going to reverse here. I don't know if it's going to continue going down. But the fact that it is, it has not completed, it has not done a U-turn, means that the price is not complete and therefore I cannot use this swing low to look for Fibonacci levels. Okay, so instead of playing, looking for a pullback, so usually when I already made my decision if I'm going for a buy or a sell, I now decide where I want to get in for the buy or the sell, right? Okay, usually I will try to look for a pullback area. I want price to pull back to an area. When it pulls back, that's the area where I get in for the buy. Just like gold. Okay, just like gold. I'm waiting for price to pull back to this area here. And then from here, I get in for a buy. Okay, so that's a goal. In this case, I don't really see a pullback because the structure of the charts is not great. And also, I cannot use this structure to find Fibonacci levels because this is not a complete low. So therefore, I am going to have to play the breakout instead. So if to play the breakout, it's, it's fairly simple, okay? Number one, you need to identify key levels. So the first key level that I noticed is this support here. Why did I chose this support? Because we can see price came here a lot of times, it comes here, it's having a hard time breaking, it's rejecting, it turns back. Finally breaks, comes here again, rejects, rejects, rejects. Okay, so this green support here is definitely, I will acknowledge a place of support that price has a hard time breaking. Okay, so it is a significant level. Other than that, we see there should be a, looks like there's a 61.8 or 78.2 lining up there. 78.6, sorry, 61.8. Okay, nope, no Fibonacci levels lining up there. That's totally fine. We don't need to force it. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. It's not relevant to us. Okay, so this is going to be a very simple trade. The simple trade is that if price breaks this area, I'm going to wait for a pullback. I'm going to let it pull back to here, here when it, and when it pulls back, I'm going to enter here for the sell. Okay, that's as simple as it, as it can get. Okay, this is um, going to put my take profit here because I want to get the closest swing low. Actually, the closest swing will be here. Okay, this will be even closer one. So you can put it here if you want. You can put your take profit here if you want. But I mean, I see this one here. So I'm going to put this one here. Okay, if you want a safer take profit, a closer one, you can put it at a 129212. If not, just use the lower one. Okay, uh, now that we have found our analysis, again, whenever you make a decision, you need to back it up with reasoning. Okay, so my decision right now, if price breaks, I'm entering here for a sell. Okay, this will be my take profit. This will be my stop loss. Okay, how did I find this stop loss? Okay, this stop loss is only applicable once when I play breakouts, my criteria, okay, different traders have different styles. Some traders, when it breaks out, they immediately enter for the top. My criteria for the breakout is that it must come back and do a retest. At the retest, then I enter for the sell. Why? Because this is to avoid fake outs, okay? Fake outs meaning that 
price looks like it has broken out, but it didn't actually break out. It actually uh, is a fake out, okay? It's a fake out. So I need a retest. At the retest, if I see a reversal pattern candlesticks, for those who don't know what reversal pattern candlestick, just Google, uh, we won't be able to cover it. So just type reversal pattern candlesticks on Google. It's not a topic I can cover right now. We don't have any more time. Okay, then you will see all the different common candlesticks reversal patterns. You will see it. If price gets this area, it pulls back, retest, you see a reversal pattern candlestick. That is your confirmation to get in for the sell. Okay, so now that I have gotten my analysis, I need to back my analysis up with indicators. I always back my analysis up with indicators because the indicators is just double confirmation or triple confirmation for me whether I can get in or not. Okay, so let's see what Ichi Ichimoku is agreeing. It is on a very strong downtrend. Okay, Ichimoku is on a very strong downtrend. Uh, there's no reason for us to believe otherwise. Until we pull up RSI and stochastics, then we will know if there is divergence. Okay, DMI is on a very strong downtrend. Okay, red, the trending trend, the red line is above 25. Blue is below yellow. That is a very strong downtrend, very, very strong downtrend. Ichimoku, DMI, both agreeing that it's a sell. Okay, it's time to see if there is. Come on, let's get RSI. Okay, it's time to see if there's divergence. The minute I see a divergence, my confidence level for this trade immediately decreases, okay? So let's see if there's divergence. I, I never want to see divergence, obviously, but if there is, then I'll just take it as it is. Okay, so divergence. Divergence in the case of stochastics and RSI is very simple. If price is going down on the chart on RSI, RSI and stochastics, price should be going down as well. If it is going up, that is RSI and stochastics way. Why did you put the stop there? Okay, so usually, for breakouts, I will put the stop. I was trying to avoid this swing high here, okay? I was trying to avoid this swing high area here. So I usually put it on top of that area, okay? Uh, if I put it above here, then it will be too far away, okay? Then the risk to work doesn't make sense anymore. So I think to be safe, but not too safe, like just good enough, I will put my stop loss around this area and hope that when price comes here, it does not wick me up. So my stop loss strategy, I don't really have like a Fibonacci level or reason why. I usually look for key levels and put it slightly above or below the key levels. Okay, in this case, I was trying to avoid this area, but this area is too huge. It's too wide. So my best bet is to put it just slightly above this area and hope, okay, I'm just going to, it's, it's really too wide. So I'm just going to put it above this area instead. Okay. I'm going to put my swing high above this area instead, my stop loss above this area. So if price were to come back and retest, okay, hopefully it doesn't wick us out. Okay. RSI, bullish divergence. Uh, Jamil is really good with this divergence stuff. Okay. So um, I see it. I see Jamil. Hold on, give me a sec. I see the bullish divergions, okay? It's not a strong one, just like gold. I see the divergions, but it's not exactly the strongest divergions. Uh, let, me, let me try. Yeah, I, I don't love it, honestly. I do not love these charts right now. In a perfect world, there wouldn't be divergences, but if they are, we are going to acknowledge that they are. Okay, we cannot pretend that we don't see the divergence. I do see the divergence. It's a very tiny one. Okay, it's just like the tiniest divergence in the world. Do you want to take this into consideration? Again, up to you guys. We just need to acknowledge that the divergence is here. Okay, so Ichimoku is saying 
is a strong downtrend. DMI is showing us a strong downtrend. RSI now says that there is a very slight bullish diversion, okay? A very strong bullish diversion will start here at the top of this uptrend here, okay? That's a very strong one. But in this case, it only started halfway here. It started somewhere around here in this area. I will acknowledge that it is there. Uh, whether you guys want to take it into consideration is up to you. Okay, uh, same for same for stochastics, okay? It's showing a very slight, a very, very slight bullish divergence because look, I'll show you guys how to spot it. Okay, by right here is making swing, swing highs, right? And here's another swing high. Okay, but on the RSI and the stochastics, uh, sorry, on the on the stochastics, it's making swing highs rather than swing lows. So there is a slight, do you see that slight higher high here? But by right price is going down here. Okay, so that is already divergence. Another thing is it's supposed to make lower lows here. Instead, it's making higher highs here. Okay, so um, both RSI and stochastics are showing slight divergences. Do you want to take it into consideration? It's up to you. Okay, um, before I pulled out the RSI and stochastics, again, my confidence level for this cell was like 80%. Now that I see the slight divergences, I am now like 60% confidence, okay? So do you want to get into this trade? It's entirely up to you. I think for gold, looks like the Nike tick is playing out very well. Okay, Jamilu, you, eh, not Jamilu. I think Summit, yeah. So Summit, you would have saw my analysis this morning. This morning, I already caught for this Nike tick. Uh, hopefully you got in. You were in my my you did see it right. Uh, I I hope I'm not I'm I hope you are the same summit from this morning. You are the same summit from this morning, right? <laughs> okay. So um, this morning I already called for this Nike tape. Looks like it's playing up quite well. It's already halfway through. It's already actually almost reaching halfway through our take profit. The next question is: Will it be able to do the buy? Okay. Will it be able to execute the buy? Okay, if this sell plays out, then that's great. We missed it already because when we started this webinar, price was already on the way to the take profit. That's okay. We can miss trades. Nike takes happen all the time. We don't need to force this Nike take, okay? Uh, yeah, so that's all I have for today. XAU and JPY, I have a very, I have a buy for XAU USD. Take note of the RSI that bear, uh, bearish divergence that Jamilu spotted. The gap gives me confidence for that. <laughs> okay, and USDJPY, I wanted to sell, but now I see this two divergences here ruining our plan. So, so I'm a bit not confident. Okay, uh, where do I think Gold Bull will resign? Okay, so I'm actually, on my own trading style, I actually use a lot of idiot wave. Okay, I don't know if I, I taught you guys Elliot way before. For those who like regulars such as like Jamilu, you, I, I just taught Elliot Wave, but for the rest of you, I don't know if you've already learned Elliot Wave. So based on Elliot Wave, gold should be in an uptrend. If there is a price going down, it should be just a pullback rather than a downtrend. Okay, uh, we're actually over time by 10 minutes, but I don't mind going longer if you guys don't mind staying longer. Okay, because I don't have anything else to do today anyways. How do I catch you always, please? Uh, okay, so I'm always, I'm always doing webinars for Everest Fortune Group, so you can try to spot Everest Fortune Group stuff. Okay, so um, this is my take for goal. One, two, three, four, and five. Is this recording available? Yes, this is recorded. I'm just not sure where they post it. Please approach uh, Tick Mail. 
because when I started this webinar, it says, it said recording in progress. So I'm sure someone will take this recording and post it somewhere. I'm just not very sure where it will be. Okay, so based on my analysis, gold is on wave three. Okay. Okay, this is my analysis for gold. So my analysis is on a long-term goal, it's on an uptrend. If it pulls back, it just means that it is doing a wave one, two, three, four, five. If it pulls back, it has to happen. Pulls back have to happen, okay? Price don't go one straight line up. It always moves in a zigzag. So if you see price going down for gold, it means that it's doing the retracing the retracement or the pullback. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I don't, uh, no, there isn't a, a certificate. Thanks, Summit. Yep, we do have that tomorrow. Recording, please approach take mail. There's no certificate. Uh, thank you, Summit. Oh, thank you, Richard. Okay, so Richard has answered the question. Recording is on YouTube, take mail. Account is about, account in about three days. Okay, thank you, Richard. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, Muhammad, I won't be able to teach you this today because this is, Elliott Wave is not something you can learn in one hour for sure. The Elliot webinar must be a YouTube take me account as well, man. Yep, that's right. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much, everyone. I will catch you guys again next week. Unfortunately, I only see how did you draw that? Okay, you can go here under the T, you will see this. You see this pattern here, but if you don't know Elliot Wave, you wouldn't be able to draw this out anyways. Okay, so you need to first learn Elliot Wave before you use these drawing tools. Yep, that's right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. I will catch you guys again next week. Okay, bye.